And we know that we can go to the rock, Christ Jesus. Father God, we ask that you would continue to stand by this family of faith, oh God. Let them know that you are a comforter and you will never leave them nor forsake them, oh God. Father God, we hope to, throughout this service that no one may leave here without knowing the powerful presence and the knowledge of salvation, oh God. Father God, we ask that you would continue to breathe life into desolate situations, oh God. Father God, you are the lifter of our head. We rejoice today for our brother, for he knew the Lord, oh God. The psalmist said, I'm not worried about my soul because I fixed it with Jesus a long time ago. Father God, we thank you for being a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, a light in the darkness, our Godhead three in one. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' most powerful and precious name, amen and thank God.
Jesus Christ. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. John 14, 1 through 3. We trust that beyond absence, there is a presence. That beyond the pain, there can be healing. That beyond the brokenness, there can be wholeness. That beyond the anger, there may be peace. That beyond the hurting, there be forgiveness. That beyond the silence, there may be his word. That beyond the word, there may be understanding. That understanding, there is love. This is humbly submitted this day, February 22nd, 2021, by the order of the Highland Park Missionary Baptist Church, Sister Delise Boyd Clark, Reverend Byron L. Cox, Pastor. God bless you. Amen. Are there any other resolutions? The family of the late Charles R. Riley would like to thank their many friends for the support and kindness shown during the death of our loved one. May God continue to bless you and keep each of you, the Raleigh family. Amen. Thank Reverend Vessel for the rendition of Take Me to the King. Amen. That's one of the songs of the church because we truly have our king awaiting yes, jesus amen. christ is our savior mm -hmm. 
-hmm. He's our Lord, and he is our soon returning king. Amen. 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 This time, we would like to read the obituary salad. took advantage of it, Amen. and that is to be to the praise of our God. Amen? Amen. 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 This time we'll set aside remarks. Uh, we will have remarks coming from the Peggy Rally, and it will be followed uh, by uh, the ministers uh, here Amen. after her. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give an honor to God mm -hmm. and to our ministers, as well as to everyone here. I'm going to keep it short, sweet, and to the point. And I just want to thank everybody for showing us a lot of love, showing us prayers. I, I want to thank you for your prayers. I want to thank you for your cards. I want to thank you for... <laughs> You know, just being there for us. We do appreciate everyone here. And once again, speaking on behalf of the Riley family, on behalf of his mother, Miss Juanita Wade, and all our relatives, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you. Thank you. This time we have remarks coming from Reverend Donna Vesta, uh, Associate Minister of Highland Park Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. And Pastor Snorton, he will re reserve his comments uh, uh, when he does the eulogy. Amen. <coughs> To the Rowley family, we just want you to know that we, the members again at Highland Park Missionary Baptist Church, are here for for each one of you. When you hurt, we hurt, but we know that we uh, have the power in prayer to support and show our love for one another. Deuteronomy 31 and 8 says, It is the Lord who goes before you, leading, guiding, directing you. Don't be afraid. There might be trouble, lonesome times ahead, but God is with you, never to leave you nor forsake you. We ask and we want you to know that we're praying that uh, God will revive, restore. He's able to keep you and carry you through, whereby you might be able to say, through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus, and I learned to trust in God. God bless you all. Amen. First, I would like to thank the Rowley family again. Uh, 
So deeply sorry for the loss of Brother Rowley. And to Mother Kent and Reverend Kent, uh, members of Howland Park, I want to thank them also, along with the family, for allowing me to be a part mm -hmm. uh, of the home going celebration mm -hmm. uh, of your dear loved one. I don't take it for granted to be able to have an opportunity uh, to show support and comfort at such a difficult time as this. Amen. The Bible is not afraid of letting us know about the deep struggles and losses of life. Amen. The Bible does let us know that God never leaves us, mm -hmm. neither does he forsake us. Mm -hmm. And Amen. even Jesus himself uh, lost close loved ones to yes, him. He yes, he and he knew the separation and the physical separation of, of the loss of someone close to you. Yes, so much so, he was at a grave site where he wept. Yes, and that weeping was not just a drop of a tear. It was guttural. <coughs> and it was a sense of great loss. Yes, yes. But I just want to encourage you today, even in that same chapter of John, mm -hmm. no one can say what Jesus can say. Right. No one can do yeah. what Jesus can do. Right. He says, I am the resurrection <clears throat> and I am the life. Yeah. So our Lord and Savior will comfort <clears throat> us. I hope his words will, will comfort us just like he told Martha. Mm -hmm. The thing was for Martha, he said, do you believe this? Mm -hmm. So if we believe this, Paul says, work for comfort one another mm -hmm. with these words. Amen. Amen. The Lord is, Amen. will be with his yes. great family. So, half of Allen Park Church family, we're praying for you, and we definitely uh, are here to do what we can. At this time, we will have uh, Reverend Loretta Kent to come up Amen. for a tribute. Miss Juanita, Charles' mother, Amen. to the daughters, Tiffany and Shalon, yeah. her husband, Dante, in-laws, Mother Kent, mm -hmm. Aunt Margie, and to Peggy Riley, mm -hmm. nieces and nephews and friends that came. We all want to grieve when our loved one passed away. Yeah. But I want to tell you, don't focus on the loss. Mm -hmm. Focus on the memories. Mm -hmm. And that's where he always going to be yeah. mm -hmm. in your heart. Mm -hmm. The most memorable moment I had of Charles <coughs> was at my birthday party. <laughs> we was at a friend's house and she had a pool. <laughs> and if everybody know Charles, he's always late. <laughs> so we had me and my friends, we swam in the pool. By the time we got out, we was fixing our plate. Here come Charles. He wants to swim, and that's fine. He threw his hands up, did a belly flop in the pool, and swam right out of his trunks. <laughs> I'm going to remember that until I die. <laughs> but the words that I'm saying, I can't give you peace. But I know a man that can give you peace. And Paul says it best in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. And it says, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through 
Christ Jesus. Yes, I'm just going to tell you to stay in Christ. Mm -hmm. And he'll give you the peace that you need yes, that Lord. passes all understanding. Yes, I love you, family. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Ken. Amen. As we have heard, the Lord will give you peace. And we're trusting in that. Amen. 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 This time we have Solo coming from Sister Joanna Cannon. Amen. 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 It'll be followed by the eulogy from Pastor David L. Schmark. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. To the family, we the family of Joshua Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Have you all in our prayer. Amen. And if you ever need us, y'all call upon us. Amen. And we love the family. Amen. 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 One of these mornings.
condolences from Joshua Tabernacle Baptist Church and from my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who can comfort you when you can't even comfort yourself. God is still in control even when it seems like the world is out of control. You can trust in him. For the Lord didn't say we wouldn't have heartache and pain sometimes. He just said he'll never leave us or forsake us. And you never know that the Lord is all you need. <laughs> Until he's all you really got. Amen. 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 I'm with you, family, at this time, at this point in your life. And I want to briefly just give you some words, I pray, our words of encouragement mm -hmm. as we remember our dear brother Charles Rowley. Mm -hmm. Amen. I want to share with you out of the book of Luke, Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through... 37. Yeah. Luke chapter 10, 25 through 37. This is a familiar passage. And behold, a lawyer stood up to, him, to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, mm -hmm. what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. Mm -hmm and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you've answered correctly, do this and you will live. But he desired to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him, bound him up, bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. Mm -hmm. 
The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the keeper, the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him. Mm-hmm. And whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Okay. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? Mm-hmm. He said, The one who showed him mercy. Mm-hmm. And Jesus said to him, You go and you do likewise. Mm-hmm. And then the remembrance of Charles thought about that passage and I thought about a man that cares. Mm-hmm. A man that cares. Mm-hmm. It's been said that people don't go to a funeral just because somebody died, but actually they go because somebody once lived and not not just existed. Yeah. And by the testimony of Charles's friends and family, Charles was one of those kind of people whose life made a real impact and a real difference. He cared for his mother even as he dealt with his own medical issues. He did as much as he could for as long as he could and could until he couldn't do anymore. That's a good son. But if anybody who's been raised right can care for a good mother. But Charles cared for all those around him and he used his gifts uh, to benefit others. He was a father figure yeah. to many extended family and even to the young men he coached mm-hmm. in football. Yeah. So much so that people thought that they were his sons and some of them were even convinced they were his sons as well. <laughs> Charles has such a caring heart that even his dogs, Chloe and Allie, made it into the adventure game. Man, they told me he loved them dogs. <laughs> He was just the kind of man that cares and oftentimes put other people's needs before his very own. And those kind of people, when they're gone, their absence causes a ripple effect of loss in the whole community. We need more generosity like that of Charles that sought the best in people and brought out the best in people. In fact, in many ways, when I think about Charles, Uh, his life, I can't help but think about this story of the Good Samaritan. Mm -hmm. Because with Charles, what we see wasn't always what we got. Charles was just a regular guy that would would see people in need and he would stop what he was doing in order to help somebody else. We all heard the story of the man who asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus Mm -hmm. said, what does the law law say? How do you read it? And the man said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. Mm -hmm. And love your neighbor Mm -hmm. as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. Jesus tells him that he has answered correctly, but the man wanted to justify himself, and he asked the question, well, who is my neighbor? Mm -hmm. In other words, who am I obligated to love like I love myself? Mm -hmm. What's the bare commitment that I must give Mm -hmm. to other people? And Jesus told him this story about what we call the Good Samaritan. This story is is Jesus' response to how we should see each other and how we should treat one another. Jesus tells the story of a man that was traveling along a dangerous road and was ambushed and robbed and left for dead. And in this story, the ones that you thought would help the man as they came alongside of them, of him, were actually the ones that saw the man and they left him beaten and half dead. Instead of helping this man who was obviously hurt, the priest and the Levite crossed over the street to the other side. Mm -hmm. Now, we can't be too hard on the priest and the Levite because the road was they was traveling on was notoriously dangerous and was known for robbers that would ambush do-gooders traveling along the way. It was not too far-fetched for a man to play hurt in order to entice someone to come by to see what was happening, and then his friends would jump out, rob them, and beat them. Who knows if this man was laying on the side of the road, if he was really in need, or maybe those uh, robbers that beat him was just standing by waiting for some do-gooder to come by so they can jump out and he'd be their next victim. You see, caring for people can be a risky business when people take your kindness for weakness and they'll hurt you while you're trying to help them. That's one of the things that made Charles special. He he felt that people were worth taking a risk on. And when you take a risk on people, sometimes 
you'll get burned. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I know another man that didn't mind taking a risk on some folks and mm -hmm. others felt like others felt like that they weren't being they weren't even being uh, worth being around. A man that didn't mind talking to, to you even though you had a bad reputation and was mm -hmm. criticized for eating and drinking with mm -hmm. sinners. Mm -hmm. A man that would help show compassion for someone in need even when they couldn't do, give him anything back in return. Mm -hmm. Do you know this man? Mm -hmm. A man they called a traitor uh, they called a traitor to be his disciple because he loved so much that he was willing to give anybody a chance. Mm -hmm. If you don't know who I'm talking about, this man's name is Jesus, and he took a risk on you. Therefore, just like Charles, we should be willing to take a risk on somebody else. Amen. And this unlikely man who no one would ever uh, expect saw someone hurt real bad. Mm -hmm. He left, that was left for dead down in the gutter, and, and he stopped by so that he could help. He picked the man up, he takes care of his wounds. He places him on the donkey. He takes him to an inn. Then he paid the innkeeper to take care of him. And whatever was owed him when he returned, the Samaritan said, I will pay you back. This story of the Good Samaritan reminds me of Charles because just like the Good Samaritan, Charles would go above and beyond what anybody would consider reasonable help. Mm -hmm. You see, it was a good, it was it was good enough that the Samaritan stopped by and that he bandaged the man up. Mm -hmm. It was good enough that he put him on his donkey and carried him, carried him to a safe place to get rest and healing. It was good enough that he gave the innkeeper money to take care of the man, but then he went above and beyond and he told the innkeeper, whatever you spend, when I return, I will pay you back. You see, not only did he go above and beyond to help someone in need, but the Good Samaritan took responsibility for the man's care. And Charles, when he got involved, when he decided to stop what he was doing to intervene on somebody else's behalf, he actually took responsibility for them. And he made sure that whatever he started, he finished. And I could tell you some things. That kind of compassion doesn't come naturally for everyone. The kind of empathy that will cause him to invest in the lives of his players in such a way uh, that he wasn't just a coach, but he was also a father figure. And he sacrificed to ensure that those who didn't have got what they needed. The ability to love people like that is a gift that only comes from God. I know that it comes from God because that kind of blessing isn't based on focusing on self but finds its fulfillment in supplying the needs for others. Charles was a man that would go above and beyond. He was the kind of man that didn't go around preaching, but he let his life be a testimony for, for the God that he served. Mm -hmm. What I like most about what I've learned and heard about Charles is that when he decided to get involved in your life, he didn't just let you go. He would go above and beyond what others thought was necessary. He loved people with an agape love. That is a love that comes from God. That love that says treat people the way you want to be treated. Want for them the same things that you want for yourself. Well, that's a picture of this good Samaritan in 2021. It's a picture of what Jesus does for us in 2021. He goes above and beyond what some say is necessary. Mm -hmm. I remember the elders saying, if I had a thousand tongues, I couldn't praise him enough. If the Lord doesn't do another thing, he's done enough already. But I can tell you today that God is not through me with me yet. For just like Charles lived while he was still alive, Jesus stood in the gap and he did for us that which we can't do for ourselves. Amen. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. But the work it's not over. Mm -hmm. Christ didn't just leave without any leave us without any hope. Mm -hmm. He told his disciples, I'll send you a helper that yeah, will come for yeah. you in times of trouble. Bring back to your memory what I taught you. You right. give you power to do what I said do. Mm -hmm. God didn't do another thing. He's already done enough. Already he, done enough. he has prepared a way even through our mourning. The loss of our loved one to comfort us in times of trouble. He's already provided for you a memory that you can remember the times you had with Charles. 
Yes. God yes. sent his Holy Spirit as a helper that gives you the strength to endure the pain of your loss. If God doesn't do another thing, God has already done enough. Amen. But there's one more thing that the Good Samaritan illustrated that Charles tried to put into practice while he was alive. But Christ has promised in the fullness of time. And that is, he's coming back to take care of whatever has been left undone. He will set all wrongs right. He will settle all debts and accounts. He will fix what we broke. The Good Samaritan was just a story that explained the truth about God. Charles lived a life, but he is gone uh, from us, and he's gone to be with the Lord. But I'm so glad that Jesus, he lives. He lives. He lives. I'm so glad that my God is alive. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. I know he holds the future, and life is worth the living because he lives. Amen. Remember to put your hands in the master's hands. Right, Amen. right. His hands makes all the difference in the world. Yes, it does. And God has already done enough, but the Lord is still not through with you yet. Amen. May God bless you and keep Amen. you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace, peace, peace. Amen. 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 That's all right. You can express yourself. Amen. 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 I want to thank Pastor Snorton. Amen. Amen. What excellent uh, uh, remembrance of Brother Charles Riley. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I was reading in the uh, obituary. He was a groundbreaker. And isn't it fitting in February, Black History yeah. Month? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. That we remember him as he broke uh, through the barriers, yeah. amen, yeah. being a uh, news producer, amen. Yes. amen. So that amen. is a great accomplishment, amen. amen. And so God is good. And so to all those who, who are here, we ask that you will receive this blessing. And we hope the words said, the song sung, the memories that were uh, that were expressed yeah. has comforted you Amen. in some way. Amen. Amen. For today. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence. We can't thank you enough yes. for always being with us. Thank you for reminding us, Lord, through the message of the Good Samaritan, that every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above and that we can go beyond ourselves to make sure somebody else can be blessed now we pray that the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit may he rest rule and abide with everyone here until the Lord comes we pray for traveling grace to those who are going to the cemetery. We pray for traveling grace as we go to our different destinations. And we thank God for this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Serving as a pulpit, if I can have you come at this time. Thank you.